This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. And I'm Juan Gonzalez. Welcome to all of our viewers and listeners across the country and around the world. Thousands marched across Bolivia on Monday to demand the resignation of Janine Añez, the right-wing senator who declared herself president of Bolivia last week after longtime socialist president Evo Morales resigned under pressure from the military. The coup d'etat has thrown Bolivia into crisis with violence across the country, leaving at least 23 dead. On Friday, the military gunned down nine pro-Morales protesters outside Cochabamba, where indigenous people took to the streets again on Monday. Thousands more marched to the presidential palace in La Paz. Self-proclaimed President Añez canceled the trip to her home province after receiving a death threat. The wave of protests are condemning the spike in anti-indigenous violence under the, the interim president and demanding the return of Evo Morales. Añez has a history of using racist, anti-indigenous language and is vowed to bring the Bible back to the presidency. Last week, she issued a decree uh, protecting the military from prosecution for any violent acts and said that Morales would face prosecution himself if he returned to Bolivia. Evo Morales is Bolivia's first indigenous president. Bolivia has a majority indigenous population. He spoke to Al Jazeera from Mexico, where he fled after his ouster. I am absolutely convinced that these violent groups are bringing racism back. And racism turns into fascism. They burned union buildings, the houses of my comrades. They attacked the house of my sister. They looted my own house. Well, for more, we're joined by Sasha Llorente, the Bolivian ambassador to the United Nations, president of the first committee of the UN General Assembly. He's speaking to us by um, uh, he's speaking to us by phone. Uh, uh, we welcome you to Democracy Now. Ambassador Llorente, we don't know where you are. Or do you fear for your safety? Uh, I think that all, all Bolivians do right now. There is a uh, a systematic uh, a, uh, persecution being the, directed by the the ones that took uh, power through uh, violent means. Um, allow me to say good morning to you all also. Uh, but uh, I mean, the, those are not those were not just threats. Uh, the uh, who is now running the minister of government, who is the interior minister, has threatened to hand. Uh, down uh, uh, members of uh, the uh, uh, of mass of the uh, mo movement towards socialism like animals that's what he said but not just that but also who uh, the the woman who is in charge of the minister of communication she said that uh, she will persecute uh, journalists or pseudo journalists as she put it because they were act uh, committing acts of sedition and uh, those were not just uh, threats, uh, Amy, but uh, if you uh, read the report of the uh, Inter-American Inter Commission on Human Rights, they reported that so far 23 people was, uh, was killed, uh, were killed, and uh, more than 700 are uh, uh, wounded. So uh, we, are, we are going through uh, not just a coup d'etat, but, but a violent one, and they are uh, continue using violence uh, against uh, uh, peaceful demonstrations. Uh, uh, one issue that is uh, of our concern, and I think the international community has a common position on that, is that uh, this, uh, this uh, dictatorship, they issue a, a decree, it's called a su supreme decree, that allows the military to act with impunity. They are. Uh, they the, this decree uh, says that the military is able to conduct their 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 operations, so to speak, and uh, without any uh, uh, any fear of uh, a legal uh, uh, procedure or for them not to be uh, accountable. So uh, of, I think that people in. Uh, in, in my country is, uh, of course, afraid, uh, as, as uh, President Morales also said in the, in the interview that you just uh, uh, show, uh, uh, not just uh, uh, members of our political party are being persecuted, not just members of the legislative body are, are persecuted, but also social leaders. And many houses were burned uh, to ashes. 
and uh, they are uh, uh, i mean uh, there there there's there's some members of uh, evo's cabinet who are uh, who's, who are in uh, asylum in, uh, in in embassies or had to flee for uh, to exile so it is like uh, going back to the to the 70s uh, really amy well, Ambassador Llorente, I wanted to ask you, a lot is still not don't known in terms of details of, of what happened in the, in the hours or days before uh, President Morales uh, uh, resigned. Have you been able to talk with him and get a better sense of what happened? Because clearly there was a public an announcement of the military that they recommended that he step down. But there, at, at that point, as far as the rest of the world knows, there was no direct activity by the military. Could you talk about uh, if you've had a, a conversations with him, what you know about why he decided to resign and leave the country? Well, uh, Juan, this was a very well-planned coup uh, because uh, there were many, many, many factors that uh, um, that uh, can really uh, that are being disclosed uh, right now. I had the chance to talk uh, many times with with, uh, with President Morales, who's still the president, by the way. Constitutionally speaking, we can get to that later. Uh, but uh, what uh, what happened was that um, first uh, it was uh, the, the, uh, as you know the police and the military are the two institutions that have uh, weapons that are armed in Bolivia. Uh, the first one that joined the coup was the police. At the beginning, they refused to uh, uh, to comply with the instructions of the of the uh, of, of President Morales' government, but then after they joined the demonstrators against the the government. That was one part of the of the armed coup. The second part was even after uh, President Morales uh, uh, publicly said that he's willing to call for new elections, to elect a new electoral body, and with new political actors, meaning that he will not be running for, for uh, on those elections. Even when he said that, uh, the, not just the, the chief of the, of the, of the armed, Bolivian Armed Forces, but also of the police, uh, recommended him to resign. But when someone that has uh, has uh, weapons recommend you to do something, it is it's, it's a threat. But even beyond that, Juan and, and Amy, this goes, I mean, uh, to the safety of President Morales. Once, uh, even before he resigned, even before he resigned, all his uh, security uh, 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 was uh, uh, was dismantled. Uh, he couldn't use the, the presidential plane, and uh, some loyal members of his security team showed him messages in which people were offering them fifty thousand dollars if they would, uh, if, if they would uh, mm, hand him over. And there are videos that you can uh, see that uh, uh, the police was handing him down even before his resignation, and it, it was. Uh, wars after his resignation. Be beyond that, when he he when when Mexico offered him asylum, the Bolivian military did not allow the the Mexican plane to leave the country. Not just that, they didn't allow the the, the Mexican plane to fly over uh, over uh, Bolivian air airspace. So there are many many factors. And uh, just just for me, I think this is very important. But uh, once the the, the self-proclaimed uh, president, uh, Senator Añez, uh, in his in, in his first interview, he thanked the police. She thanked the police, and she said that they will comply with all the offers they were given. I mean, I mean, the police uh, was given. All the offers that were that, that were given, so it was clearly a, 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 a coup d'état run by uh, the right-wing uh, uh, politicians and the uh, uh, eastern elite of uh, of Bolivia, but also by the police and the military. 
Um, I wanted to play some of um, those who are talking about the Sakaba massacre. The Andean Information Network interviewed more than two dozen witnesses of the massacre in Bolivia Friday, uh, speaking with the Institute of Forensic Investigations and viewed the death certificates of those murdered. The witnesses did not want to be identified by their name out of fear for their safety. This is one of them. They are saying the people from the mosque are attacking, but this is not true. They have come peacefully. And the journalists of Bolivia are not talking to people from here because they know they are going to tell the truth, and they do not want to unveil the truth. We are just asking for peace for Bolivia, please. We do not want more dead. We do not want more sadness. You can see by yourself how many people have died. And this is another demonstrator in Sacaba speaking just after the massacre on Friday. I want to share my concerns with these police officers that had sold themselves to the ones that have the money, Camacho and Mesa. They are shooting us with helicopters, like if they were at war. But they never had this war when Evo was president. But they are sending bullets and helicopters and tanks against us now. Today, we have almost five or seven people dead. So it looks like there's at least nine people dead over a hundred injured, and you have the self-proclaimed uh, president of Bolivia, um, Janine Añez, previously calling indigenous communities satanic, declaring her presidency will bring yes. the Bible back to Bolivia. Um, Bolivian Ambassador Sacha Yarente, can you uh, respond to who Janine Añez is? And what is your role right now? I mean, can you walk into the uh, consulate in New York where you resided? Well, first of all, this is uh, 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 the uh, um, the there's an elite uh, mainly in the eastern part of the country with a lot, a lot of money. That in 2008, you might remember, Amy, they wanted to uh, uh, split the country. They wanted to, they, they started a, a, a movement of cessation of uh, that part of the of, of the of the of the country. It's, it's powerful people uh, that were uh, directly affected by Evo, Evo, Evo Morales policies. Mainly in terms of land, of other, uh, of the administration of other uh, uh, natural resources, and also uh, the, ba the banks. Uh, so uh, there is, it is not just uh, Senator Agnes, but uh, behind her there is a class. There is a uh, uh, there are economic interests. They already started uh, started a uh, different policies. Uh, that uh, want to restore neoliberalism uh, in, in Bolivia. Just I'm going to give you one example. Uh, they want to privatize some of the of the of the uh, of the um, endeavors that uh, Evo Morales built during the last 14 years, and uh, they want to get rid of, get rid of all the regulations for ex exports in Bolivia. We used to we used to. Uh, 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 regulate exports in order to keep uh, the prices low in Bolivia and to guarantee that everyone gets those products in the country. But now they are getting rid of those regulations in order for them to get more, I mean, profit mainly. So it is, there, is, there is a clear economic project uh, by these people. It is not just uh, uh, this uh, uh, senator that uh, is now the self-proclaimed president of, of my country. There is a real uh, uh, path to, dis to, to destroy all the things that we have achieved in the past uh, 14 years. That's one thing. The second thing is that it is a racist uh, elite. Um, you know, they, one of the first things they've done, uh, in, in, in not just in one place, in many in different cities in Bolivia, they burned down uh, the Wipala. That's the indigenous flag. Uh, I remember that they've done that in 2008, and the UN, UN uh, clearly stated that that was a racist act because that is a, a, an indigenous symbol that is also recognized by the constitution adopted by in, in 2009. So we are talking about a, a, an economic plan. They do have an economic project. They do have. A, a, a social project, which is, I mean, the, re the restoration of these racist uh, uh, ways of, of running uh, the state. 
but at the same time they are aligned with the with the, the policies of the White House. The first things that they've done is to uh, um, uh, recognize uh, the other self-proclaimed uh, president of Venezuela, uh, Guaido. They expel all the Venezuelan diplomats, and they expel the the the, the, the medical workers, uh, the Cuban medical workers, the the, medi the, the the Cuban staff that help a great deal in terms of of reaching the the the, 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 the more isolated communities in in, in Bolivia. Uh, uh, so uh, this is what's what's happening, and it's not surprise that one of the first countries that that recognize Senator Añez was precisely uh, uh, the United States. Well, Ambassador Llorente, we only have a few, uh, a couple of minutes, but I wanted to ask you two questions, wonder if you could respond to them briefly. One is, what's been the response of the international community? Because clearly, uh, the self-proclaimed president, uh, as I understand it, has fired most of the ambassadors that President Morales appointed around the world. How are they reacting to that, uh, to, to those orders? And also, uh, you're look, looking back at uh, the original unrest uh, under President Morales as a result of his decision to continue to run for uh, another term, uh, uh, even though it was against the original referendum that he supported of term limits. Your, uh, your sense of whether any mistakes were made by the movement that uh, he's a part of? Well, uh, answer to your first question, Juan, I mean, I think that uh, most part of the international community is... Uh, is looking closely to what's happening. They are really uh, um, concerned about, for, for example, that uh, decree that gives impunity to the military, and uh, they want fair elections. I think that uh, the Inter-American uh, Human Rights Commission, the Michelle, Michelle Bachelet as the high, uh, uh, high uh, uh, commissioner for human rights, uh, I mean, they, they, they stress that very, very clearly. There are many, many governments that are not recognizing uh, that one. There's just a handful that have. Uh, and uh, I think that the only way in which we could solve this, uh, this, 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 this problem is through, through uh, a negotiation uh, in order to have uh, transparent elections and with the full uh, uh, participation of the movement towards socialism. And they have to guarantee that. And also they have to stop uh, uh, the repression and, and, and persecution. And uh, your, your, your other question about was uh, mistakes. I think that, uh, of course, I mean, we, we made mistakes. Uh, uh, the, 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 the process of change, as it's called, the, the Bolivian revolution, was made by human beings. Uh, and uh, we made many mistakes uh, along the way, but there were great successes, Juan. I mean, we have reduced uh, uh, poverty like no other, from 38% of extreme poverty to 15%. We have raised the... Uh, the quality of millions of people that now are part of the of the middle class, and uh, in parentheses, uh, many of them are are are, are now uh, protesting against uh, the, the government that uh, set all those uh, the the, uh, the conditions for them to improve in their in their in their lives, to, uh, and also uh, in terms of uh, 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 child mortality to to protect. You know that Bolivia is is the uh, according to the to to the World Economic Forum, is the seventeenth country in the world in terms of uh, reducing gender gap. The seventeen, way be, be behind many many uh, European countries, because there were policies direct, directed to to that goal. So we've done. Of course, there were mistakes, but I think that. Many, 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 many good things were. Ambassador Irenti, we only have thirty seconds. Do you think the yes. U.S. was involved with the coup? I mean, I think that the the, the OAS is the is the, the the pawn of the of the United States government, and of course they were involved. They were part of the of the coup, and also they 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 acted in in uh, in coordination with the calendar of the coup. And were you fired? Well, they try to fire me, but they can't because I'm I'm, I'm recognized by the uh, credentials committee of the United Nations. I'm still the ambassador of Bolivia to the United Nations. I will not recognize that uh, uh, that dictatorship, and I, I'll, I'll continue to do uh, my job in the best of my capacity. Do you think the president would be killed if he went to Bolivia? 
uh, they would try. They 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 try to kill him. They try to him for sure. Uh, and uh, he saved his life because of uh, he was protected by 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 peasants in in, in Cochabamba. Sacha Yarnti, want to thank you for being with us, Bolivian ambassador to the United Nations, president of the first committee of the UN General Assembly. When we come back in an abrupt reversal, the Trump administration announces it no longer views Israeli settlements in the occupied West Bank to be a violation of international law. Stay with us.